here's what we're going for. Um, basically, this is part of the map of the door and the other parts of the building. Um, so this is kind of what we're creating in 3ds Max right now. We're creating the texture for it. Um, and eventually, we're going to have, out of these ones, we're going to have these patterns, um, which we're going to have to create them so they tile uh, perfectly. Um, this will be the end result. Um, then we'll take this and cut it up and make it into these patterns. I'll go back into 3ds Max here, and this is where we left off on the previous tutorial. What we want to do is uh, tile this stuff, okay? So, and then we're going to render it out as a map. So if we take this object here, Okay, so uh, I'm just going to fast forward through this part here. Um, uh, these are all kind of repetitive actions, so um, I'm going to still show them in the fast forwarding uh, part of it, but uh, uh, there's no need to go into it second by second. What we want to do is uh, tile this stuff, okay? So, and then we're going to render it out as a map. So, if we take this object here, which we built before, and then uh, move it with the shift button and hold it down and let go, and then we'll make, oh, I don't know, I'm going to go with the eight copies. Uh, we probably won't need as many as those, but we'll just do that for now. And then delete those. Basically, we'll be adding this to here to kind of replicate this molding. Let's go to the front view and then Z to zoom in on selected. Put that down a little bit so it's underneath this line and uh, we might want to bring it forward just a hair so that we can see this part here. So I'm going to put this underneath Kind of using the side view as a um, reference, and then these parts are going to come up here, and we'll move them up a little, up, up just a little bit more. So that's pretty good for that one right now. Okay, let's go back to the front view and make this what's going on here. So I'm going to bring this over, place it right there. Turn off a reference just so we can gather up these. Um, I'm gonna bring this and slide it over. And try what we're gonna have to do here: a tile ability. So um, I want to place this where it's gonna tile. Um, so right now, if you see these two points here and this point here, is gonna be our 
best tiling spot. Um, so let's also click on here, bring on the reference, just to get the spacing right, hold shift, copy another eight, and reference off again, bring this over, slide that here. Remember, tileability, so whatever is on this side has to be the same on this side. So I think I worked it out where it would be even at this point here and this point here. Um, let's see again, we, this stuff is also behind this, so we got to fix that. So let's go to the shaded view, perspective view, bring these back to here. Actually, let me move these ones first. Bring these forward so I can see them all, and then move these back. So that's pretty good right there. These ones are already in line. This one needs to be moved back a little bit. And we're going to constantly adjust these as we're going along to make sure that they tile um, perfectly enough so that we get the textures out of them. Um, okay, so let's go back to the front view. And how I'm getting back to the front view is Alt-W. So Alt-W switches. You click on the plane that you want, one of the four views. Alt-W, hold Alt-W, and go back to the perspective. Bring this back over to here. Bring it down a bit. Turn back on the reference. Select these edge loops, these ones, and go to connect. Oh, 18. Now we just want one. Um, and then, whoop, we're still on tool. Hit check mark. Hit this. Hit connect. We want two of them. We can then move them about to the left and right. And I'm just going to go back and make one more. Connect just one. Okay. So now, so this is going to give us two uh, things there and one thing here. We'll go down to the extrude. And, okay, now we're not right on the right one. We want, always want for this project local normals. Um, that seems to be the case most of the time here. And right about there is good. Click on that. And I'm actually going to hit our snap on, which we can hit the S key and then turn snap on. Um, I'm just going to copy it over here. Now, I think in the perspective view, it's not centered. So we'll have to fix that just by hitting the line and then center and then apply and then move it over. And see right now, if we zoom in on this, it's not actually connected. So an easy way to fix that is to take our pivot point, effect pivot point only, hit the S key, and change the pivot to right here. Click off of this, because we don't want to affect the pivot anymore, and then snap it to this one here. So now we have two copies. Um, I'm going to hold select, try to make another two copies out of this one. Oh, wrong pivot. That's easy enough to fix. And that should be about all we need. And bring it back over here. So it's going to go in this spot here between these two lines. We select all these and then bring them over to. Um, it's not going to match the thing exactly because we're making kind of our own spot. Um, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to turn off this reference and select these, bring them over. Okay. Uh, the corner we'll do later in Photoshop. Okay. So now, um, I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to bring this over. Let's make these. Uh, now, to get this stuff to line up right, um, I'm going to select all this, deselect the background. Move this over, almost an exact copy on this side as this side. Basically, this end has to connect with this end. So, um, uh, the rest of this piece is going to continue over on this piece. 
And this is really a lot easier to do in Photoshop, but I want to get the basics down into its max so when we render it out the texture map, it shows just right. Okay, so I'm going to move these up a bit and over. Um, this one looks pretty good because it's all tiled already. Um, this we'll probably keep here. Um, this looks good. This one is not good because it reached the edges. So I'm going to scale it and then move it to where it should tile perfectly because this circle here is split in half where this one's split in half too so they'll match up. Okay, we actually need something in the background to render off the normal maps otherwise they'll they'll get a little uh, um, anti-aliasing and, and, and pixelated and it's, it's just not a good thing to have so um, we definitely need a backdrop. And how far back that is, it really doesn't matter, but it shouldn't be intersecting with anything. Let's see, so now this doesn't look like it lines up, so I'm going to move this where it would line up. Move it over a bit. And I think we're going to have to scale it down just a bit, just so it will tile right. Scale it up, so going for the middle of this opening here, these openings. Our goal is to get the texture out of it, the tiles. Um, so it looks like we're good here. Um, I'm just going to hit a quick save and then we'll compare this to my old file. And it looks pretty much the same, except this is moved in the center. So I took the backing and I added just a plane that fits exactly how I want it to tile. Um, this takes a little planning on your own project, but you want some kind of background uh, thing in the background to show because um, we're going to have, no, have to know where to cut it out in Photoshop. So if this wasn't here, I might cut it here or here, but I really want it at this line and this line. Um, so, um, let's render this out, um, but first, um, I want to tell you something important that is really needed to make this work. See how this is almost like a solid, I mean, look at all that, look at all those polys, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, I put everything that's high poly on this layer here, so I'm going to select that and show you what I did. Okay, so, I'm going to turn these both off, and I left them there for a reason, so that I could show how I did this. So this is basically what we had before. You know, we had the this amount of polys and everything. What we need to do is tessellate them. So if you go to the drop down and hit tessellate, you'll get this box. And I don't want them faces because I want to keep most of my uh and I'll turn it on so you can see the effects. Um I want to keep the polygons. I don't want to make them tries yet. I know that's what to be in game, but um, for this, it doesn't really matter. But it's just be best practice to keep them in four quads um, instead of uh, triangles. Um, it's taken a little bit to turn that on, um, and so we can see here it makes them into to triangles. So I want polygons. Um, and it's going to take a little while, just bear with me here, I'll edit this out later. Okay, so here we are again. And then I put the iterations on three because you need a lot of polys to get the right effect. Um, you also need a turbo smooth, which is next. So I went down the Dropbox and added a turbo smooth. This is required for high poly because it creates more of a depth. Without the turbo smooth, you can see all the detail in here. If we just had this with no turbo smooth, we would just have... A flat plane and when you have a plane like that say it's a box but it's still plain baking procedure um, doesn't distinguish between this and this because it's exactly flat so that's why we need all these curves and, and turbo smooth makes a lot of curves but you don't want to just do it just turbo smooth because if you get rid of the tessellation um, it distorts the uh, object too much where you'll be getting like things like this like this is a hexagon and this was a cylinder but 
without the turbo smooth that's what they actually look like so to tessellate it um, it'll keep that basic shape but add more geometry to it so and then you click on turbo smooth and it creates even more smoothness of uh, the object so those are two essential um, things that you need to, to make this work um, so now uh, now that we have this we're gonna need a low poly box um, and that basically is just uh, without the cage it's basically in fact I'm gonna just delete this whole projection because we're gonna do that over it's just a box um, and it fits everything inside that box so we get a nice a good nice um, normal map so you can kind of see these two white lines of the box and everything is everything all the high poly is inside that so um, now uh, we're gonna bake this map here so if you hit zero on your keyboard you'll get the render to texture dialog um, and this has to be enabled this has to be enabled uh, you have to go to your options and go to setup and looks like enable global super samplers is still on from previously but that needs to be on and you also have to be in scan line render mode uh, so you can just click the X's here and then with this button will pick the high poly geometry um, not sure what that was about but um, this is all the geometry that's showing that's not hidden and that's what's left over is the high poly geometry that's the only thing we're selecting here we're not selecting any of the other objects um, and then we'll get this projection thing here so um, that adds to the modifier to the list and since we placed our box so everything's in it we don't have to really do much with this projection cage which will show up in a second after it loads um, all we have to do basically is make it the same size as our box um, right now uh, once it loads here it's actually a weird size uh, you never want to use the size that it gives you because it's it's these blue lines which is I mean it's totally weird that's um, just crazy I mean why would you want want that so in order to get rid of that would be, we'd have to hit this go down to the projection um, you scroll down to you see cage and then open up that menu and hit reset now we don't have to do this for this exact project but um, you would normally hit shaded in point and then raise the amount so that you can see what's going to be in the box but uh, actually looks like we are getting a little bit of green here showing through but I think that's just the preview um, so we're going to actually keep it at zero and how you get it to zero is just hit reset okay so back to the render the texture um, I'm going to create an add a map I want normals at element and I want it at 2048 uh, you can do any size really um, I even put for the previous one 4096 but for just the purposes of showing this tutorial we're just going to keep it at 2048 just so it renders a little quicker um, but you could render it out at any any square you want it has to be a power of 2 oh another thing about this box here it is perfectly square so um, if it wasn't square our normals would be stretch so you want everything to be square when you're running this out everything else looks good here um, so uh, you might want to do a save uh, because sometimes when you're making these maps it crashes um, so do a save and then hit render okay and it's done now um, it took about two minutes to render this so this is what was rendered out this is a pretty good normal map that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.